Welcome back. It is Monday, January 1st in the NBA. My four favorite picks are on the way. Happy New Year, everyone. It is 2024. Wow, that's wild, but I appreciate you guys for tuning in. My name is Austin. If you are new, let's do a recap of how we did on December 31st, the final day of 2023. NBA wasn't great. One and two day. We had Jalen Williams over in PRAs. He did come through clutch. He had in with 25. Durant didn't get a lot of assists. They get it with five. I think he had like eight or nine assist chances. We took him for six and a half and 10 plus. Like he scored over 30 points. Same thing for DeJounte Murray. I mean, when he's scoring 30 plus, Plus points he's not getting six assists that's just he's not going to get that done but i kind of want to take a step back let's not worry about that let's start the new year with a 4-0 sweep which we'll talk about our nba picks any moment but i want to take things and put things into perspective that's my favorite part of doing these january 1st videos is kind of looking back at how good of a year we had in 2023 and it was a monumental year not just for you know the call our shot channel for me personally when i got married and all those types of things but you guys really really crushed it this year and we want to talk about first i'll do a betting recap then we'll talk about the call our shot numbers and really just give you guys some praise for not only just tuning into the videos every single day but just interacting if you've watched a video or maybe this is your first video i welcome you to the channel but look let's just talk about 2023 there's going to be a lot of long intro because i like to do these sort of types of videos if you want to skip to the picks you certainly can but 2023 was a really good year for us i mean we talked about betting wise and the mlb which is super easy to track plus 31 and a half units now in the nba and nfl those seasons obviously creep on into the next year so like this year's nba record we're up 26 units we also had some units left over from last year 32.63 in total for basketball in the year of 2023 and then nfl only 13.45 units in total up 77.58 units now for comparison i'm gonna throw up the 2022 stats where you know we had a monumental year i mean we're up over 50 units and not just the mlb 64 in the nba and then 30 in the nfl over 147 units gained pretty good now in my opinion sure you could say hey austin big down year i mean you only won about half the units as you did last year yeah obviously i would love to get back to the 150 unit mark however if we take a flashback to this 2023 we not only had arguably the worst stretch well, not arguably the worst stretch i've ever had in the mlb we lost for two straight months we could not buy a win we had the worst stretch i've ever had in the nba we could not buy a win in the playoffs. And then we had the worst stretch I've ever had in the NFL. We were down 15 units at some point in the NFL this season, and we managed to climb all the way back up to about eight and a half units, which is where we sit today on this season. Look, I just think it's so, st I mean, I've been betting for four to five years to have a career, you know, bad stretch and not in all three major sports. How bad, how, how likely is that to happen again? I say very unlike we still had you know plus 77 and a half units still pretty solid that i would not complain about that but i just think we're gonna have a much better year in 2024 I'm very confident in that you know we put a lot of work into the videos we obviously can't control all the outcomes we learned some lessons and i'm, I'm confident 2024 we're getting back over 100 units if i were a betting man which i obviously am pretty confident we're getting over that so I, I i'm just confident 2024 will be a big year for our bets so i appreciate you guys for tuning in we gotta get locked in because we're gonna have a massive year in 2024 i can just feel it those bad stretches are behind us the bad luck's behind us we're gonna have some good luck to even itself out and we're gonna dominate 2024 now that's the betting perspective in terms of the call on our shots perspective, you guys absolutely blew any of my numbers that I could have had out of the water. In terms of, hey, I go into, normally I like to give myself some, you know, hey, this is what I want to reach by the end of the year. Yeah, you guys blew out those those expectations. I mean, last year, I went into 2023 saying, hey, I want to hit 100,000 subscribers, which at that point we're at, I don't know, somewhere in the 60s and 70s. And look at these numbers in 2023. 17 million views, more than that, 17.683 million views, 950,000 watch hours. If you convert that to minutes, you guys watched me or Logan talk for 57 million minutes. That's a ridiculous number. And we gained 129,000 subscribers. Now, before I've been talking to that, I like to put in perspective how we did in 2022. So I'll pull up those numbers, 6 million views, 450,000 watch hours, 27 million minutes, and gained 46,000 subscribers. So bring it back up to 2023 numbers. I mean, look, give yourselves a round of applause. I mean, pat yourselves on the back. You guys have changed not only my life, but definitely Logan's life. And we definitely really do appreciate anyone that has tuned in. Obviously, 2023 was a crazy year. We had the ladder challenge to kick off the year, which that'll be returning soon. But it just was crazy. I could not have imagined, you know, the channel turning into what it did in 2023. I even spoiled a little bit of something in the coming in the future uh, on our Twitter at last night is that I got interviewed by ESPN, which that probably feature should be coming probably closer to the Super Bowl is what I've been told. But just, I mean, it, it's hard to put into perspective, you know, how much you guys have changed my life. So I really do appreciate it. I mean, I don't want to get like teary eyed, but you guys really mean a lot to me. And the fact, you know, like I said, not just the call on our shop perspective, but the fact that I was able to meet a lot of you in person, which we have some cool, you know, meet and greets coming up in the next few weeks. 
but just the fact that you know that i go to a game and people say hey austin or hey colin or shot that's an, that's unreal so you know i really do appreciate it not just for me i know logan appreciates it too and he's not in a ton of videos you know right now because he's 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 hibernating for mlb which is on the way soon and then he'll be in the grind season but like really appreciate you guys i i don't know what else to say i mean those numbers are just ridiculous not only do we have a great betting record but a betting season but just a really good 2023 so if we could do anything close to that in 2024 i'd be super super pumped but like i said nothing's given in this business you know it's there's new people entering every single day new people gaining their traction losing subtraction here and there it's what happens so the fact that you guys stick with the corner shot channel for the whole season or maybe just one season for one sport whatever it doesn't matter to me i appreciate it. i really do appreciate it what if you just watch one video you come back every single day like I really do appreciate it. So I know this has been a long intro. Um, these are my favorite videos to record the January 1st one because then I get to look back on it next year in 2025, which is just bonkers to say Then we can see exactly how we felt then and kind of look at our numbers then. But look, nothing's given in this business. So we got to work hard. We got to have, let's try to go for 150 units, one across all sports this season, which I think would be our best ever. But let's dive into the picks of the day. Appreciate you guys. Happy New Year. I know this has been a long intro and maybe some of you skipped forward to just the NBA picks. Let's dominate 2024. We're going to start with the first one, a one and a half unit play. The fro, Jared Allen, 31 and a half points, rebounds, and assists, minus 111 on FanDuel. Going to be tough to get through this video after all of that because, you know, it's it's fun to sit back in emotions and kind of talk about, hey, this was how good of a year 2023 was. I mean, I didn't even mention, you know, I got I got married, a bunch of other things. We have a bunch of cool travel plans coming this year. We all started a second channel. We had merch. How we launched merch. I mean, it's been a really good year. I, I like I said, I can't say it enough. Thank you guys again. 2023 was ridiculous. Let's make 2024 even better. All right. Now enough about that. Let's talk about why we like Jared Allen. Why we put one and a half units on the fro over 31 and a half PRAs. Now this is minus 111 on FanDuel. I would play it at, at 32 and a half. Although if you are looking at that, just check his other lines because I really like. Honestly, I like his assist line. I like his rebounds line. I like his points line. Now in it, Allen's last few games, he's turned into a beast. Now I can't guarantee that continues because this is Jared Allen, but. Last three games, 43, 53, and 48 PRAs. Now, you look at his field goal attempts slash free throw attempts combined, because sometimes, you know, you get to have a guy that shoots 10 times, but he gets fouled and shoots 10 free throws. Those combined, 19, 23, and 17 field goal attempts plus free throw attempts average 23. 0.7 potential rebounds, 10.3 potential assists. Now, obviously, Donovan Mitchell did miss two of those games, but did return back last game. He still had 48 PRAs in that game, and obviously, Mitchell gives him another option for, you know, guys on offense where you're like, all right, we got to actually be concerned about Donovan Mitchell. But the guy crushed it. Most importantly, played 35 or more minutes in all three games. And we look at this game against Toronto, fully expect this one to be close They're in Toronto here. And we just saw the Raptors lose to the Pistons. But I think this game close. And I don't necessarily know if RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly are playing today. But I'm not too concerned because in his last six career games versus Jakob Pertl, the starting center for the Raptors, when you've seen Allen play pretty well. He's had 25, 35, 30, 35, 28, and 38 PRAs. Now, Mobley and Garland are remain out in this game. Now, obviously, he is not going over this line in all those games. But also, he's not seeing the usage that he's, he's never seen this insane usage that he's gotten the last few games i mean 17 field goal attempts in back-to-back -back games i don't expect that to be continuous if allen somehow manages to consistently shoot 15 plus times this line will not be 31 and a half tomorrow it will not be 31 and a half. it will continue to be it'll probably go up to about 34 and a half 35 and a half which i think is where it could be if his usage remains the same but we've seen i mean they just don't have a lot of high usage guys out on the court i mean isaac Okoro and dean wade are sometimes afraid to shoot the basketball and then you got donovan mitchell obviously he's going to command a ton of defensive attention and then max Struess is out there too and then guys off the bench you know karis levert and whatnot but they don't really have a backup big man so jared allen's playing a ton of minutes and this is a good matchup for him I mean, we've seen the last two centers first the raptors you had luke Cornett. Yeah, he's like the fourth string center for the Celtics. He put up 31 PRAs. And then you have Jalen Duran, who doesn't have much of an offensive game, 37 PRAs. He did it mostly on points and rebounds. If you've been watching how they've been using Jared Allen these last two games, they've mostly been actually using him. I don't really know a good center to kind of equivalent, to equivalent, make it equivalent to, but they've been using him a ton in the top of the, you know, top of the key, maybe right above the free throw line, kind of passing it to him. And he's kind of surveying the defense. And that's why he's averaged, you know, over 10 assist chances these last three games. And I wouldn't be surprised if they continue to do that because the offense has looked pretty good and jared allen's kind of shown hey he can do that and so i really like this matchup for him against the raptors Pirtle's going to play a lot of drop coverage so if maybe jared allen sets a screen donovan mitchell starts driving you can have some easy pick and pops or maybe some easy not pick and pop jared allen actually been shooting pretty well in the mid-range but also just some easy you know hey dump it off i'm gonna come dunk on you know which jared allen we know he's capable of doing that and this guy that shoots over 60 percent from the field so look i know it's crazy to trust jared allen out of all people for one and a half units but 
if he continues the same usage and they use him the same as they have been, he should soar over this line. Give me his over 31 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. I like his over in assists and probably points the most rebounds, but we know he's good at grabbing rebounds. I mean, 23 potential rebounds these last three games. The other guys out there like Struz, you know, Dean Wade, Akoro, even Donovan Mitchell, not big rebounders. So Jared Allen, who's going to have to guard Yaka Pirtle, who doesn't shoot anything besides, you know, post hooks or in the paint. He should just be chilling down there, grabbing some boards. I really like Jared Allen today. One and a half units kick off the new year. Now, my second pick, it's going to be a guy that will be on the thumbnail and a guy that honestly his line should be about 900 points today. It's Giannis Antetokounmpo over 35 and a half points, minus 120 on BetMGM. Now, you will rarely see me take a line this high. 35 and a half is just nuts. I mean, you need a lot of things to go right for to hit a line like that. But this is Giannis against the Pacers, and this is a no. This is I just have to do it. It's just how it goes. Now I would not play this any higher than probably 36 and a half or 37 and a half. Now I think I saw Bet365 jump up to 38 and a half. That's too high. Don't even don't even bother taking that. But like I said, Giannis destroys the Pacers. That's what he does. Last six games versus them: 50, 41, 25, 38, 54, 37, and 64 points. Going over this line in five of six. Now obviously a line at 35 and a half, tough to go over. Still crushing them, and we know that last game. Giannis, 64 points against the Pacers. And what they do? They took away his ball. And you remember, he got a little bit pissed at that. Started poking like Tyrese Halliburton in the chest. Like, you're going to go get that ball for me. Or run into the locker room trying to get the ball. Yeah, um, I can't imagine that sat well with Giannis. And I, if he didn't need any more motivation to come in here against the team that he always destroys, I think he's got a little bit extra motivation. I think he just goes berserk against them. They just, I mean, we know the Pacers give up the most points per game in the paint. Doesn't give up a lot of threes. They have no answer for Giannis if he gets within the three-point line. And I just think he's going to continue to dominate him. I don't need to give any more of an analysis. Giannis taking us over 35 and a half points. No sweat bet. We're just going to go with it. It's just, it's a system bet. We have to do it. Now my third play is going to go to actually the same game. I mean, you got an over under 259. Yeah, we're going to expect some points and you're going to get some points from the other side too. Taking your guard against the Bucks. What you do? Tyrus Halliburton over 39 and a half points plus assists minus 108 on FanDuel. I missed the days back in the beginning of 2023 when Halliburton had a line around 30 and a half. I really do. When we had 30 and a half points plus assists, we would just take it. And he was a COS Hall of Famer. He treated us nicely every time. They, those days are long gone as Tyrese Halliburton is having a career year. Going to probably be all NBA first team. But we look at uh, Tyrese Halliburton and why we're taking this line. I don't mind his PRA line too. I don't like this a ton at 40 and a half. If you can get PRAs at 43 and a half. So definitely check that out. Now, let's talk about because I don't normally do two picks of one game. But here we are. We've seen Halliburton's last four games. Guys got back. Obviously, we saw him berserk in the in-season tournament. Then he had about a two-week slump where he was kind of felt like he was a little bit exhausted from that in-season tournament run. Well, he's back to cooking the last four games. Look at these stat lines. I mean, Jesus. 29 points, 15 assists, 33 points, 10 assists, 21 and 20, 22 and 23. He's had two back-to-back -back 20 and 20 games. I don't necessarily know if anyone's had three straight, but I want if no one has, I bet he's gonna in for it today. 27 and 29 potential assists these last two games. I mean, <laughs> what do I, what more do I have to say? I mean, he's over this line at four straight. Insane usage. Getting the perfect matchup. Guards against the Bucks. We talk about it all the time. And now, not only do you have Giannis on one side who's pissed because, you know, they took his ball. Halliburton was kind of disrespected in that process. Giannis was disrespecting him. And he's got a perfect matchup. Uh, and you got an over-under at 258 and a half. I, I, there's plenty of points and assists to go around. Halliburton, insane usage. I also like that Bruce Brown is still out too, and he's kind of, you know, an annoying guy that takes some usage, but Bruce Brown just caught a stray from nowhere. But look, Halliburton, this is a perfect matchup for him. High over under on the road. Their underdogs here is like seven and a half point underdogs. They're going to need him out there. And even if they are trailing by a lot at halftime, they're going to need him out there and he's going to be more aggressive. You got Brooke Lopez and drop coverage. Halliburton, we've seen him have games where he just scores like 25 points in a quarter. His line went up in points despite him going under the last two games. Would not surprise me if Halliburton dropped like a 30 and 15 game. Heck, he might go for a 30 and 30. Now, that's probably not happening, but that would be pretty cool. Scott Skiles it would be uh, pissed if that happened. But look, I, I love Halley. We're ringing in the new year with him. He should go off against this Bucks team. And this is a high over under. Halliburton, we love you. We're starting off the new year with the Halley wagon. Over 39 and a half points plus this is a nuts line. But look, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. He's probably going to play 36 to 40 minutes. Pacers will fight hard in this game. They were disrespected by Giannis. And while I don't think they have the facilities to stop Giannis, they're going to play pretty dang hard. So I like Halliburton to carry that offense. The potential assists are out of the water. Hopefully he drops another 2020 game. And if he's even close, I bet he will be chasing the 2020 game, which is exactly what we need. 40 points plus assists, 2020, 20, that's 40. Boom. Now my fourth play of the day, we'll be going to my New York Knicks. The earliest game of the day, I think a 3 p.m. start. 
The Knicks are barely underdogs against the Timberwolves, a team with the second best record in the NBA. That tells me that two guys have to show up. And that's Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle. Let's put them in a the same game parlay. Jalen Brunson, 25 plus points. Julius Randle, 20 plus points and six plus rebounds. It's plus 108 on Fando. I wanted to do 25 and 20, but that was a little bit, that wasn't plus value. And I think Randle's going to get six rebounds. I think he pretty easily gets that done. Now, I was actually going to just take Jalen Brunson's over in points. However, his 26 and a half points was about minus 125, minus 130. 27 and a half points, fine. I think that could be a sharp line where he ends with like 26 to 28 points. I just think that this is a guy that he has a has not the best matchup, but I think he's going to dominate the Timberwolves today. And that's too much of a usage to go around. I also like Randall at seven rebounds if you only have that, if you're on like a bet 365. Now, let's talk about the Knicks, who obviously dealt away RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly. And I think OG Ananobi plays today, probably pressures Achua plays as well. Malachi Flynn, I don't know if he plays. And sure, they might play a lot of minutes. I know one play. Well, the Knicks at the end of the day, by getting rid of Barrett and Emmanuel quickly, you really don't have a lot of guys that can create, can create their own shot. Now, OG's all right at doing that. Mostly a catch-and-shoot guy, which is what they tried to make RJ Barrett. He's not the greatest catch-and-shoot guy. But at the end of the day, there's two guys on the Knicks that are going to have their ball in their hands a ton, and they're going to shoot a ton. And that's Jalen Brunson and RJ and uh, Jalen and Julius Randle. And we see Randle really consistent. 20-plus points. You wouldn't guess it. 17 straight games. Had six plus rebounds and 28 of 32. Like I said, I like him at seven plus rebounds too. Pretty confident he gets that. I really like the rebounds look. Now, they're going to need Randall, obviously, to rebound with Cat and Gobert down there. Isaiah Hartenstein can only do so much. Randall's going to have to be down there to end some defensive possessions. And he's normally had a pretty good track record rebounding against Carl Anthony Towns. The one game he didn't, he dropped 57 points, which was against the Timberwolves, obviously. Uh, I don't think that's happening. Now, we saw in the Knicks only game versus Minnesota this season, Brunson got the 25 points we needed, only 15 field goal attempts. Randall, 21 points, like six for 16. Obviously, still got the 20 points and he had 14 rebounds. Now, obviously, RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly played in that game. They are out for this game. I, I think they're just going to need these two guys to step up once again. This is the Knicks team. I'm curious if they make any more moves as the trade deadline you know, approaches in a few months. I wouldn't be surprised if they make some more moves because they need some other guys out there that can control the ball and handle the ball and do things with it. And while, yes, the Timberwolves one of the best defensive teams in the NBA. However, they have one weakness, in my opinion, and that is the mid-range. They are going to give up points, and I think that's kind of their motto. I think people, you know, if you think back to the Houston Rockets days, when they were like, we're not shooting a dang mid-range. You take a mid-range, you're getting onto the bench. They were shooting tons of threes, and I think that's kind of, you know, I think that's the Timberwolves' process is they're like, hey, you know what, we're going to limit the threes. Make you shoot mid ranges because someone could argue, you know, hey, mid range is maybe not the most, you know, efficient shot to shoot. I mean, that was, you know, Mike D'Antoni's whole thing. But I think at the end of the day, what who wants to shoot the most mid ranges pretty much in the league? Jalen Brunson. I mean, that's his bread and butter. And we think about who's going to set some screens. Probably Isaiah Hartenstein. They're going to set him. And you're going to see Rudy Gobert being the guy that has to defend Brunson, not, you know, Br not Gobert coming up there and trying to guard him on the perimeter. But Gobert plays a ton of drop coverage. And so Brunson should be able to walk right into the free throw line and have those mid range looks, which is exactly what what Jalen Brunson wants to shoot. We've seen him have success against Gobert in the past, and he was only shooting 15, 16 times. I think he gets closer to like 20 to 25 shots tonight. Well, not tonight. This is an early start. I just think these two guys are going to shoot a ton. Now, I know that maybe, hey, it's not the best defensive, you know, not, not the best matchup, but we sometimes see in these early games that you just see no defense play because like, eh, it's early in the day. We're not playing defense. We're just going to go out there and try to outscore you. That sometimes happens. And I think these two guys are going to shoot a ton. I really like Brunson. I mean, I'm the Brunson whisperer, they call me. I think he goes out there and scores 25. I think Randall has enough volume to get to 20 plus, plus Cat and Gobert cannot guard him too slow with their feet. So I think he gets that and I think he gets the six boards. That is a Nick same game parlay to ring in the new year for three legs plus 108 i think that's an easy one to get and hopefully we start off one to know because that is our first pick of the day technically but those are my four favorite picks of the day i appreciate you guys as always for a crazy 2023 let's make 2024 even better hopefully we get over that 150 unit mark which i don't think we've ever hit but like i said i appreciate you guys as always for tuning in i did not mention at the top of the video because we had so many other things to cover but we do have a college football picks video for the two playoff games plus a couple other games that are on today i'll link that video on the screen you can go check out the second channel this po box opening which i mean we, we launched the second channel and you guys are sending me things that's ridiculous that's linked on the screen you can see all the different things i pulled in there i gotta update my background with a few of those things too but i appreciate you guys as always thank you again for you know a crazy 2023 2024 will be even bigger i have some exciting plans for you guys and let's just honestly let's just have a great year you guys hopefully have a great year in your personal lives and hopefully a better year in your betting lives as well thank you guys as always for tuning in that's austin i'm signing out see you guys once again in the next one peace